Welcome to the Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. And I'm Aaron Marquis. And if you thought our world was not inching closer to that creepy Gattaca future where everyone looks like Jude Law and Uma Thurman, think again, we're on our way. Sign me up. A story is making the rounds this week about a head scratching and slightly worrying court case from Palo Alto about a guy who was kicked out of his school based on his DNA. No, he's not one of Les Enfants Terribles, however you French it from Metal Gear Solid. It's actually a little weirder than that. Back in 2012, 11 year old sixth grader Coleman Chatham was pulled from class and told that it was his last day of school. The reason he was given was because he had genetic markers for cystic fibrosis. Why was this a big deal to the school? Well, kids with cystic fibrosis can't be near one another because they're extremely susceptible to contagious infections. Two other students at the Palo Alto school, siblings, already had cystic fibrosis, so Coleman had to leave, the school said. And it sounds like Minority Report, but for your genes. As it turns out, Coleman didn't have cystic fibrosis at all. His parents sued the school based on genetic discrimination. That's actually a thing now. And as of last month, the newest development is sending the case to the Federal Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. The decisions made there could affect future cases where people are discriminated against because of pesky DNA. Uh, for those who aren't experts in cystic fibrosis, which we totally are now, we looked it all up on the internet, it's a genetic disease caused by the presence of two mutated copies of the CFTR gene. Those who have cystic fibrosis are extremely susceptible to contagious infections of the lungs in particular. The current expected lifespan of someone with cystic fibrosis is about 37 years. It's recessive disease, meaning two carriers doing the dirty have 25% hey, hey, hey. chance of having a child with CF. Worth it. Uh, but if you have just one copy of the mutated gene and not two, you are a carrier, meaning you'll only have the genetic markers to pass on, but you don't have the disease itself. This is Coleman Chatham's situation. He doesn't have cystic fibrosis at all, just the markers. So how did the genetic discrimination even take place? Apparently Chatham had a heart problem when he was a baby and underwent DNA tests, which led doctors to find the genetic markers for CF. Chatham's parents disclosed this when filling out medical forms on school applications. And somehow the information on those medical forms went to teachers, who then told the parents of the two siblings who did have CF. Those parents then wrote complaints to the school asking for Chatham to be removed for the safety of their own children. Wait, 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 so they can leave their cystic fibrosis children in school, but they want to get the other kid that they think has it kicked out? Dude. So, Dude. You're impassioned. And since the school apparently didn't understand how the whole carrier's concepts work either, they complied, or tried to at least. The school and the boy's family settled on keeping him in the school after he missed a few weeks. That didn't stop the Chathams from filing a lawsuit against the Palo Alto Unified School District after the fact, because yeah, they totally violated his privacy and tried to expel him based on his DNA. Which again, is completely bonkers That's since they were wrong. That? And totally acting like the villains in a sci-fi dystopia movie. like or Liquid Snake. Seems like a Metal Gear Solid. Seems plot. like it might be a little bit weird, even for Metal Gear Solid. Uh, the court originally threw out the Chatham's case, stating that the school had reasonable cause to believe they were protecting the safety of other students. That's actually covered by FERPA, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, which does protect students from having information like this disclosed, but also allows an exception for schools to do what they deem in the best interest of the safety of others without question. Not to be confused with Furbies, the creepy doll from your nightmares. But again, the school made its judgment completely incorrectly, as Coleman was simply a carrier of CF, which scientifically doesn't make him dangerous to those affected by CF at all. Now that the case is going to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, it's attracting national interest from other government agencies. The Department of Justice in particular filed an amicus brief for the Chathams, which is just a fancy way of saying they're legal bays now, <laughs> and argued that the case demands more proceedings because it violates the Americans with Disabilities Act, among a number of others. So what is it that makes this case so important? According to the Genomics Law Report, a decision made in this case could affect future cases where genetic non-discrimination rights of one student could be pitted against the perceived health and safety of other students. You know, like when a student hasn't been vaccinated, for instance, and other parents want I'm gone, or if there's a history of mental health issues in someone's family. If you didn't know, we actually already do have laws safeguarding against genetic discrimination. Suck it. The Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act of 2008, or GINA for short, GINA? Protects, <laughs> protects individuals from having their DNA used against them for both employment and health insurance. But no law like this exists in most places when it concerns education or other industries. Surprisingly forward thinking of our government, they don't normally do that. So good job, everyone. Uh, now we just need legislation to stop messing with dinosaur DNA, because we all know how that's gonna go down. Oh yeah. Because DNA testing is getting less expensive and more accessible, cases where genetic discrimination comes into play are happening more and more commonly. The first lawsuit to be filed by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission on the grounds of 
China, China had to do, oddly enough, with carpal tunnel syndrome. A temporary memo clerk for a fabric company filed for permanent employment, but when it was discovered through family history on her medical exam that she could be predisposed to carpal tunnel syndrome, the company rescinded the offer. Dang, it's cold. Most of the cases that the EEOC, we don't have a China sounding word to go with that one, has resolved, typically have to do with family medical history. China is fortunately broad enough to cover even that in addition to genetic testing. But the first China case that made it all the way to trial did have to do with DNA and poop. Atlas, an Atlanta-based company that stores grocery-related items in some of its warehouses, ran into a bit of a problem with someone leaving some let's say fertilizer on the ground near its produce. So disgusting. They were taking shits on the floor. <laughs> That's what they were doing. Let's just get that out there. Let's be clear about it. When they couldn't catch the poop traders, Alice thought it was doing its duty by asking the suspected defecators to submit to DNA testing. Since they had some of the poop, it would be easy to prove guilt or innocence. Worst episode of Scooby Poo ever. <laughs> the only problem is that due to Gina, what is, what are we just throwing ourselves off here? It's illegal for employees to ask for DNA testing for any reason. The alleged mystery poopers sued the company and were awarded more than $2 million in, in damages. Just, we'd like you to take a test, poop in this cup. <laughs> so, lest you get worried that a day is coming when you'll be asked to submit to crazy DNA tests at work to prove you're not gonna pose a genetic threat to coworkers or literally shitting on company equipment, uh, you're actually fairly protected by China and other laws meant to keep this kind of thing from happening. While we don't know the outcome of Chatham versus Palo Alto Unified School District yet, it is a good sign that there are already some guidelines in place as we move forward towards a future where DNA tests are more commonplace. There's more to go though. You may be protected against workplace and health discrimination, but what about competing in sporting events or adopting kids with certain genetic markers or the recent go-ahead of UK scientists to modify problematic DNA in human embryos? That's what we're at now. Uh, working at slick future companies with Uma Thurman in spite of debilitating heart conditions. You know what that means. Time for designer babies. Get it. Everybody, time. come on, let's do hey. it. Hey, uh, so what do you guys think of these court cases involving genetic discrimination? Are we headed towards a crazy future for all of them with Irwin's? We can only hope that's where it'll go if we have to do all this poop testing. Uh, leave us some comments or just talk about poop. Go nuts. But don't poop on the nuts. To get the latest dump of DNA evidence and to get sharted on all of your daily poop puns, like this video and subscribe to the know. I hope I you're like ashamed of yourself. this is too juvenile even for us. No, it's probably right up our alley. Yes. Right up our pooper. I can't do it. Mine are just, mine are just sort of fluffy. It's because you, you're not getting enough squeeze in there. <laughs> I, I guess there are worse things to not be able to do. Yeah, way worse things. <laughs>